well, hello there, this is old man Steve. And I decided to, I'm going to do an oral history of when I worked at the Brill Building in New York City in the 1960s. Um, the Brill Building, I made some notes here. Um, it was at 1619 Broadway off of 49th Street in New York City. And it was just north of Times Square. And it was where a lot of music history was made. It was kind of nicknamed the Tin Pan Alley. Uh, of what was left of Tin Pan Alley. A lot of uh, everyone in the building was a, a songwriter or music publishing company or something related to the music industry. And I worked for Hill and Range, and the building is 11 stories tall, and we had the top floor. We had the penthouse. Now, I don't remember if that was the 11th floor or if there was 11 floors and then the penthouse. But anyway, the, when you went up to our offices, you got off the elevator, you were, that was it. There was no other offices. Uh, you, you got off, and there was like a little reception area where a lady sat behind this um, huge console thing and and uh, she was the telephone operator back then they had telephones where you had to it was a switchboard and you somebody would call and she would have to to punch a thing or turn a thing I don't remember uh, but it was not anything like what what phone system we have today but anyway um, I worked there in the early 60s and I started out as as a file clerk and um, the office manager was, uh, he was from Texas and I was from Texas, so he immediately, uh, we had a, a kinship there because we were both Texans. And uh, he was a nice, nice guy anyway. And then and eventually we became friends and I even went to, met his wife and his kids and all that kind of good stuff. But, but I digress. <laughs> You could, there was a lot of famous people at that time that, that had offices in the building, like, for instance, uh, Burt Bacharach and, and Hal David. Uh, they had an office there, and I used to see uh, Burt Bacharach in the elevator all the time and uh, saw him enough that he would speak to me and say hello and, you know, that sort of thing because he, he recognized that I also worked in the building. But, uh, and there was the... Uh, Peter Allen and his brother, uh, this was before he married Liza, uh, they had offices there. And in fact, Liza would uh, come and, and meet him. She would wait in the lobby for him, and he'd come down and, and they'd go have lunch together. And I saw that many times, and I saw her many times waiting to see Peter. This was before they were married. Uh, in the lobby of the building, there was uh, the Jack Dempsey restaurant. And uh, there was an entrance off of the lobby, and then, of course, there was an entrance from the street. And uh, Jack Dempsey was still alive at that time, and he was a very friendly, nice guy, especially to the people that worked in the building. Uh, so uh, I got to know him and say hello to him, and, and I'd eat there every once in a while. But it was, it was kind of expensive. It wasn't something that a young person like myself, because at that time I was... I was in my 20s, um, I'll have to figure out how old I was, but I was in my 20s, and let's see, um, um, oh, anyway, getting back, Hill and Range was a music publishing company, and they were the first ones to start, uh, they would offer somebody a subsidiary, and uh, for instance, Johnny Cash was one of our people, uh, they, as I understood it, he, they maintained 50% of his royalties and he retained the other 50% and they took care of all of his publishing of his music and whatnot. And there, it was called the Johnny Cash Music. And also Elvis Presley, uh, he was doing um, all those movies in Hollywood. And what a lot of people didn't know was that Elvis, is, we would set up the recordings in New York, uh, the recording studios. We had a staff of writers, uh, one of which was Tony Orlando, but I'll get to him later. Um, 
they would do some demo records and then they'd send them out to the West Coast to the uh, studio and then Elvis, I, I assume Elvis and a group of people would go through the songs that were picked for a certain movie and uh, pick the ones that they liked and that's the ones he would record and that's the ones they used in the, in the movies. Um, uh, it's the way it worked. And that was, uh, Elvis never came to our offices. Johnny Cash did once. Johnny Cash was a problem. He, whenever he would come to New York, he, he drank a lot and he got in trouble with the law. And a lot of times we had to, uh, they, they would send people out to go find him because he would be lost somewhere. <laughs> that was all hush hush. Nobody knew about that. But I knew about it because I worked in that office. <laughs> and I'll talk about Tony Orlando. Well, I, in my office, I shared with his wife, Elaine. Uh, Elaine and I became really, really good buddies and uh, very great friends at that time. And uh, I don't think she and Tony were married then. They got married later. She had been married before and had a son, uh, I don't know, 12, 13, 10 or 12, 13 years old, I don't remember. And, but anyway, we, we became great friends, um, and she later married him. Uh, I think they were, living, they were living together at the time I worked there, but I don't think they were married. Maybe they were. I don't know. Anyway, well, anyway, that's the end of this part one, because this, I, I can tell this is going to be a long oral history about the Brill Building, because I have lots of stories. So I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.